obviously is paying close attention very, to very space, close attention. very close attention, and uh, they are looking, I suspect, for something other than the rings around... Um, Saturn, yes, yes they are. Uh, Look, uh, Arch, put it like this. If, perchance, I say now, it's an if, it's a hypothesis. All right, Arch? So I hold on this, because it's, it's a very ominous statement. If the relevant government, I stress this fact, the relevant government were to submit to worldwide inspection and knowledge any facts proving the existence of rational beings, not necessarily humans, mm -hmm. of rational beings outside our galaxy. This would be a crisis for the Roman Catholic Church like no other crisis in its 2,000 year history. I have always presumed that myself, Father. It would be a crisis of gigantic proportions. Look, let me give you a, small, a, 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 a shadowy parallel to it. When Columbus did get to the Indies, namely get to the New World, and he brought back the news, and things had to go slowly in those days. Carrier pigeons couldn't do it, and they had no telegraphs. But when they came back to Europe, that there had been millions, but millions of human beings who never heard of the gospel, who never heard of Calvary, or of Jesus, or of the church. Theologians were stumped in the beginning. And they started a discussion, which is still going on, by the way, which in Latin was always called De Salute Gentium, about the salvation of the peoples outside the church, outside of Europe, which was considered to be totally uh, Christianized. As St. Thomas himself, for instance, says that it's possible that Homo Silvestris, a man living in a, in a forest in Dalmatia, possibly hadn't heard of the church, but all human beings had heard of the church. And suddenly they find out there have been millions, perhaps billions, uh, of human beings that never heard, never heard about the church, were never baptized. Yes. The crisis was huge in theology and started a whole new thought in Christian theology, which is still going on. Now, if we find out there are beings, not necessarily human again, technologically advanced, beyond where we are, and they, and they don't come down uh, already knowing of the Word of God. They don't know a thing about it. Supposing they don't... Suppose they, have they got souls? You know, were they saved by Christ? Must we convert them? Must we preach the gospel? Must we explain the Bible to them? We don't know. And the churches, church men are totally unprepared for it. They're too busy uh, fooling around with enneagrams <coughs> and uh, a lot of garbage of that kind. But serious theology, and remark, Art, it is I who say it, uh, and I'm paid to know it. In the church today, in the Roman Catholic Church, there is no dominant school of philosophy or theology worthy of the name. There is no theological right. development, no philosophical development. Just a potpourri of uh, modernism and of uh, phenomenology. Uh, Father, you are familiar with the... Uh the current science of uh, cloning, aren't you? Yes, I am. Um, there are many, many, many scientists who are now saying uh, that they have cloned Dolly, they have cloned sure. uh, other animals. And I'm sure they're cloning people. I'm sure are you aware that there is um, there are there are stories now suggesting that blood has been recovered from the Shroud of Turin? Yes, I know they say that. I, I don't know. I want to ask Captain Jackson. Isn't that his name? Is the Army, Air, the Air Force man who has gone into all that? I should talk with him one of these days. They say they have recovered that blood. Yes. Um, with blood, there would be DNA. Obviously. Uh, with the with DNA, there would be the possibility of cloning. And um, while it might be an unusual way to consider the second coming of Christ. Yes, I get you. I get the picture, yes. They're talking of it, Father. They are. Well, the, there's one difficulty in the way, uh, Art, and it's this, for me anyway. It's this, that uh, even twins, identical twins, mm -hmm. with all these similarities and commun common instincts, mm -hmm. 
they're distinct personalities. They're always distinct. And there's a marvelous study of uh, twins that were separated at birth and then brought together in adult life. Yes. Which brings out this very clearly, that there is a common, they have a common heredity. Yes. They, they marry the same type of woman. Yes. And they're bald in the same way. Yes. Their pubic hair is the same, and, and their height and girth and their inclinations. But they have distinct personalities. They're very distinct personae. And the wife of one twin couldn't be attached to the, if, couldn't be attached to his twin. But is it not possible to imagine uh -huh. that with the miracles that Christ performed, yes. they, if they get intact DNA, they will discover a difference in the DNA of Christ? I'm sure. I'm sure they will find a, di a distinction, uh, a difference. I'm sure they will, because... Uh, wouldn't, they... wouldn't it kind of be the final irony, Father, if the scientists were the ones to <laughs> propagate the second coming? <laughs> it, would, it would. It would. But it there's a... There's, yeah, it, it, it seems to be highly improbable to me, but uh, uh, mentally, logically, uh, scientifically, apart from revelation and the unicity of Christ, uh, I must say yes. From that perspective, it seems possible. Uh, from the point of view of revelation uh, and Christ's unicity, his unique position, it will never take place. But that's where faith steps in. Well, uh, there, there, there may be surprises that lay ahead. There may well be. <laughs> there may well be. And um, uh, the church, church men have to face them. And that's why there's a general closure or a really lip sealing, um, uh, lip zipping uh, amongst uh, responsible churchmen in Rome and elsewhere about uh, transgalactic beings. But they won't take refuge in saying that it's demonic playthings. It's the devil playing with our senses to deceive us. Yes, they seem to be moving away from that. Yes, it, 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 anyway, it's not sensible because, by the way, the, the, in the whole history of demonology and Luciferian interference with human beings, there's no parallel to that, except unless you go to Goethe's Faust, in which you have his descriptions of the witches' Sabbath on their brooms, you know, but that's all fantasy. All right. Uh, west of the Rockies, you're on the air with uh, Father Malachi Martin. Hello. 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 Where are you? Uh, this is Zip from Juneau, and I have two quick questions for your guest. Oh, Juneau, Alaska, the, yes. wet, the wet capital of Alaska. Yes, sir. It does rain here quite a bit. Well, rain, um, rain, we're all... By the way, we're 79% water, and the rest is love. So don't run down water. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm not going to call to... Uh, to talk about Bible or, or beliefs, I, I know where you stand on that, and uh, I've accepted Christ in my heart, and I know when I die, I know where I'm going. So uh, what I wanted to ask you, sir, was um, uh, have you ever considered that UFOs might be the mythology of the 20th century, seeing how each civilization, when it's reached its pinnacle before it fell, it always had created uh, its belief system around its technology, and since our God is our technology, wouldn't it be you know, just same to, to assume that uh, we would create gods and its messengers and the image yes, of technology? Yes, yes. I, I have thought of it as that, it, it, but in that I put the Star Trek series, you know, and uh, a lot of the science fiction, um, that it is a created mythology based on our technological advances, yes, uh, as a mythology. But jeepers, weepers, pardon my language, Art, uh, <laughs> it, it, what a poor mythology compared to Greek and Roman and Indian Mythology, you know, the richness of that mythology, the lessons for human beings, even in the myths of the Greek gods and legends, there are such lessons about human moral behavior and human, uh, human behavior as such. But in, in, in Star Trek or in, 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 in such productions, uh, phew, it's sort of a dry dust mythology that has none of the old... Uh, moralizing, and I love the word moralizing, and I love moralizing tales. Um, it is none of that, and therefore I, I haven't got much attraction to it, but I agree with you. It is a mythology cre created by our technology. Huh. All right. Um, we don't have a lot of time. First time caller line, you're on the air with Father Malachi Martin. Hello. Hello, Art. Yes, sir. Where are you? This is Ron from Minnesota. Hi, Ron. Hi, Ron. Hi, Hi Father Martin. I had a question. Uh, you said that... Uh, you believe that the Antichrist is alive in the world today? Yes, and I do. I, and I also believe this. 
I was wondering what your view on the rapture of the church is. All right. Uh, Father? Well, there's no... In the Catholic tradition about the Bible, uh, the rapture and all that uh, is overshadowed by the normal belief of the church for 1900 years that at one particular moment there's going to be a great assemblage in the presence of Christ of all men and women who have ever lived and are living and there will be the general judgment and the particular judgment and the condemnation of the wicked to hell and the uh, leading of the just to heaven forever. Father, on that note, hold on. We'll be right back. This is Coast to Coast AM. Good morning.